Good morning, everyone. It is a Tuesday already, and we give thanks to God that we have been gathered um, once again into God's word. It makes a difference. I know it makes a difference to me, and um, I trust and hope that it also makes a difference to you all to just be able to um, hear these words. So let us hear them this morning again with Luther's morning prayer. We gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. September 20th. Let me find the right page here. It's um, today's text is from Isaiah, um, chapter 49, which would be second Isaiah when they're in exile, chapter four, verse four. And uh, our, our devotion writer is Joshua Retter. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. There are certain seasons, relationships, and events in life that can be much harder to move on from than others. We try to shake the dust off our sandals to no avail. My suspicion is that it has to do with our tears. Wet dust turns into mud, and whether it is wiped off or over time dries and crumbles, we're left with a messy residue. The prophets aren't just familiar with this concept. They live it, writing about it in explicit heart-rendering poetry. Rarely are, we, are they allowed to make the thundering pronouncement and then cut and run. Their lives are inextricably tied to the people they are sent to warn. Isaiah turns himself inside out, trying to get a, the people to do the right thing, but repeatedly finds himself incapable of making them do it. It would be hard not to feel like your life has been a waste when the folks you are sent to turn away from disaster insist, insist on running towards it. Exhausted Isaiah points to the real redeemer by admitting his own failure. Like many of us, many of us like to think we are Isaiah, pouring ourselves out for the benefit of an unappreciative audience until we realize that we are the unappreciative audience. <laughs> This realization in light of Christ's sacrifice and suffering on the cross makes the second half of verse four all the more remarkable. The reward goes to fail. The reward goes to failures like you and me, to those who shed the tears and to those who caused them, which is all of us. This is why it is such scandalous good news. All that mud and all the tears that made it are washed away with the blood of Christ. Amen. It's interesting uh, um, how when we do have um, events in our life that we need to move on from, what things trigger us or what things um, we just hold on to, what um, maybe five years later we're in a, an interaction with somebody and we react and it's not to the situation in front of us, but to something that happened five years ago and and it feels similar and so our body and our our mouth just react <laughs> and bring up that pain and project it at somebody else um or we just dislike somebody for no reason at all and sometimes you know that is good uh, um, and healthy and kind of like your your radar is going off and sometimes it has nothing to do with the person or the situation so it has everything to do with you um, but it's so much easier to just say, oh, this person must not be trustworthy, or they have harmed me, 
um, instead of, because it's much scarier to go, why am I reacting this way? What is unresolved? What wounds am I I'm reacting from? And what needs to be healed? Would it be nice? I mean, scripture does tell us to shake the dust off our feet. And sometimes that is an, a very important um, scripture to give. Sometimes it is truly life-giving and gospel to us. If there is a situation in which you simply cannot be effective anymore. Um, where they can't hear, when somebody can't hear from you, um, gospel, grace, truth, um, trust, then there's a time to shake the dust off and move on. Now, partly is out of woundedness if that, that those people have harmed you or are harming each other and refuse to be healthy. There's a time when you just kind of leave people to their own mess, right? And you say, I'm here to walk with you, to be with you, but I'm not going to be an enabler. I'm not going to become codependent upon the situation. And so we try to move on and shake the dust off. But sometimes those people are family and they'll forever be connected. So then there's, there's healing and there's counseling and there's prayer and there's God's action to work through that. And it is muddy and there's residue that remains that are, is healed with the blood of Christ, with the forgiveness, with God doing more. And sometimes, as this text is saying, we are the ones who are the unappreciative audience. We are the ones that we are running away from our own problems that we've caused. And we keep on committing those same mistakes. It's like it's a pattern. It's like we're bound to it. We can try to dust, shake the dust off, but maybe the common denominator is that we keep doing the same things. Maybe the common denominator is um, we need to develop new tools. Maybe the common denominator is we need to get over ourselves a little bit. You know, you can't shake the dust off if you're the whole dust. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are to dust we shall return. Well, we're awful dusty, right? We can't shake off all of our life. Um, and even in death, God collects us once again from the dust and makes us our, our new creation. So remember today, as we hear from Isaiah, but I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Well, sometimes we feel like we put our lives into something or energy and either we're getting in the way or other people are getting in the way and we're not getting, I mean, vanity, like I'm just trying to puff myself up and this really is no good for anybody. And that realization hurts because it feels like we've wasted our life or our time or a season and we're exhausted and for what? Those are hard moments to get to. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord. My cause, my life, um, my joy, my salvation, my vocations even, how, how I'm called to serve others. God will have you bloom where you are planted. God will have you um, put you to use in the, the, the situations, the places, the people. And my reward is with God, not necessarily with the people around you. And maybe sometimes if you're looking for your reward with the people around you, maybe um, that's something to think about too. Of course, we want to have our lives matter, and, God, and they do. But to be truly unfettered um, in our life, to be made whole by God and then be sent out as good, healthy trees, which I think I know it's an interesting mix, mix metaphor. Trees don't get sent out, but whatever. To be planted, to be um, solid and then bear fruit. And the fruit is not born so that um, our labor has vanity or not vanity. It's simply because that's who we are. 
and God will make good on that. So know that um, all those tears, all the dust is in Christ Jesus. And God will make you new again today and again tomorrow. <laughs> um, and your life is not in vain because it is a pure gift from God. Thanks be to God. It is just dust, but it's glorious dust because we've been made by God. To dust we shall return and God will find us fully and resurrect us fully. It's a good, good news. You have been born anew today through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation for reminding us that we are dust, for encouraging us to shake the dust off our feet. And when it won't shake off, for washing us clean in your forgiveness given to us through the, the blood, the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ, that does make us new each and every day. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we rejoice. We ask that you are with those in our community who are hospitalized, those who are in the midst of treatment, those who are waiting for surgery, those who are in the midst of hard decisions, those who are in need of your strength and comfort. We pray for your abundance, for your presence, and for your love. For the gifts of relationship with others, we thank you, Lord. Continue to bind us together in our relationships. Help us to know when to step away. Help us to know when to step closer. And create in us receptive hearts, Lord. Receptive minds, receptive bodies to um, the people you've placed in our lives so that we might um, care for one another, so that we might glorify you in all that we do. For the community of faith in your church, Lord, continue to gather us in, um, continue to flourish our, our ministry, continue to put us in the right places in each other's lives and in our community for your glory. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray for all of those who are serving in our country in elected um, positions. May they be faithful. Um, may you guide them. And in their weariness, may you enlighten um, them. We also pray for the transition and all that's happening in England and the, the, great, the United Kingdom. We pray for Ukraine and Russia. We pray for China and Hong Kong. We pray for all the places in the world that need your grace. For people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, we ask for you to provide the provision through those people that are closest and able to provide it. And for all who work for peace and international harmony, we rejoice and we ask that you multiply their work and make it um, take hold. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we ask that you find a way forward that is um, sustainable for us. Um, but we know the new heaven and the new earth are part of the promises that you bring, Lord. But this earth that we have, we also are called to care and be stewards of. So help us to be stewards of the earth and also stewards of the people that live on that earth. For the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, Lord, we thank you for our um, 20 kids that came to Sunday school on Sunday, for the 12 that are potentially enrolled in confirmation for a new grief group that's forming for 
um, Bible studies that are beginning again this year, we ask for your blessing for a new member class on Sunday. Um, gather people in that, that would like that are searching for community and that would um, hear your word in, in and among us. Bless us as we continue to be the body of Christ, that creator. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day, amen. <laughs>